Welcome back to the Broadman Word, and today we are going to be doing something a little different. We are going to still be in the life of Noah. However, I really want to look at how did the flood come about, and especially what is called the canopy theory. So with that, uh, turn back to uh, Genesis chapter 7. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 7, Genesis chapter 8, Genesis chapter 1, and then Psalm chapter 148. So, but in Genesis chapter 7, we're going to start with how the flood came about. Uh, so in verse 11, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So, you have just this incredible amount of water. And how does it come about? There's two sources that I am seeing here. One from below, and then one from above. So... Uh, verse 11 is, uh, you get to see a little bit of each. So you have these fountains of the great deep uh, that are bursting forth, and then you have these windows of the heavens that were opened and rain fell upon the earth. So you already get a picture of that. And then Genesis chapter 8, uh, if you turn to that, uh, in Genesis chapter 8, um, he is talking about the end of uh, the end of the flood. So go to uh, Genesis chapter eight, um, verse. Uh, let's see, verse two. Uh, so Genesis uh, chapter eight, verse two. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated, and in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. So, you have the fountains of the deep talked again. You have the windows of heaven, of heaven, sorry, that were talked, uh, that were mentioned again. Uh, this time, they are closed. So, the question is, what are these things, and? What does this really have to do uh, with the flood? For starters, this is a very fun thing to look at, but it does not change the overall result of the flood. No, banner, no matter if there was a canopy, uh, and that's where we get the waters from heaven, or what we are going to be looking at uh, with the fountains of the deep, no matter what it might have been, the end result is that there was enough water for a global flood that wiped off uh, the, that wiped out the, uh, the life at that time, except for a family that God chose uh, to see it through, again, not because of anything they did, but because God chose them to see uh, this, this flood through and to start the world anew uh, with the animals that the Lord brought onto the ark as well. Uh, so that is the end result, no matter what uh, this looks like. Uh, but still, it's interesting, nonetheless, to look at uh, what this might be. Now, when it's talking about the fountains of the deep, I think it's probably referencing to the, the trenches that we see in the sea. But I think it also could be referring to uh, underwater volcanoes. It makes a lot of sense uh, with them being called fountains of the deep and them bursting forth. Uh, it definitely sounds like a volcanic eruption of sorts, uh, but it could just be that it erupted water instead. Uh, it is very hard to tell exactly what is meant. And the reason why is because at this time, uh, Moses, who I believe wrote the 
the, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, is writing to an ancient civilization. So therefore, they do not have uh, a lot of our meteor meteorological, there you go, meteorological research and um, and mechanics that we have today that help us to see what these things uh, were. So at that time, you don't have them. So what is the best way to describe those things is uh, to paint them the best way that you could for the audience in that time. Now, does that mean that water didn't come forth from below and above? No, it exactly means that. It's just no, uh, Moses, in that time of writing this account uh, from the Lord, who, again, the whole Bible is is the word of the Lord, uh, but also with the with the uh, the passed on uh, tradition from the Israelites on down, uh, you have this great just account that to try to paint a picture of how how much water was being poured onto the land, whether, again, from below or above, and how violent this flood was, which makes a lot of sense, especially when you think about how a lot of things uh, are formed in this world uh, after the flood, especially the Grand Canyon. I think the Grand Canyon, me specifically, I believe the Grand Canyon was formed by the flood. I just, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, however, you have not just the fountains from the deep, but then you have these heavens opened. So what is that talking about? Well, to really get a sense of this, let's go to creation. Uh, so go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. We're going to be looking at day 2 of creation. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. So... Uh, first off, you, the mention of heaven there at the uh, in verse 8 could also be interpreted as sky as well. So this is where we get the canopy theory. This idea of expanse or uh, another word that you could think of um, for expanse could be canopy, but it could also be firmament, which is oftentimes what we see when it comes to this, uh, this word being talked about. But whether it's expanse or firmament, um, what is the canopy theory. So the canopy theory is this idea that there was this canopy uh, between the universe and the uh, the sky that we see today. If you just look up, uh, there's this canopy separating those two that God puts in place, and it stayed in place until uh, until the flood. And so when the flood happened, when it's talking about the waters coming down uh, from heaven in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 7, uh, the windows of heaven being opened. In Genesis chapter 8, the windows of heaven being closed. That is talking about uh, the, the canopy of the canopy theory. My thing is with this is a very interesting theory, and it it does make a lot of sense based off of chapter one and how it's written. The fact that it, expanse could be translated into the word canopy. However, however, I just me personally, I think uh, I just don't technically see. Uh, that being the case, because you have this being talked about in Psalm chapter 148, verse 4. So go to Psalm chapter 148, verse 4. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. 
So this idea of the canopy um, with the waters above the heavens, is it still active today? Is there an actual canopy between the universe and uh, what we see today, this idea of this expanse um, in the midst of the waters and let separate the waters from the waters or God made the expanse to separate the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. Now it's interesting because on the fourth day, he then, he then talks about the expanse again. So go back to Genesis chapter one in verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the sun, and lesser light to rule the night, the moon, and the stars. And God set them in the, in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. So for me, I think this idea of a canopy is really just to show that there is a separation from the universe and our sky of earth. I personally don't think that there was a literal canopy at that time where it's almost like a balloon that when God popped it uh, to cause the flood, that's what caused the waters or the window being opened. No, I think if, again, if you put yourself into the time of uh, the writing of this book, uh, the reading of this book, my thinking is that when you're talking about the windows being opened, it is just to show the amount of rain that came upon the earth. I think that is all that's talking about. It's not literally talking about a canopy being opened and then a canopy being closed like this force field that was around the earth, which the canopy theory in itself very much reads like a force field around the earth that could open a little bit in a certain point and at a certain time and then be closed and it's still there. I don't see that in uh, in scripture. I don't see that in the world that we live in today. Now, is it possible because uh, obviously this we live in a post-flood world. So is it possible that before the flood, there was an actual physical canopy between space and the Earth's uh, atmosphere? Possibly. I'm not going to say that it's not. However, based on what Scripture says, based on uh, the, just the idea of it being just a separation between space and the atmosphere. And then based on uh, Psalm 148, the fact that it still gives that language even after so many decades and, uh, and centuries from Genesis 1 to the book of uh, Psalms written, by, uh, written around the time of David and his descendants. Me personally, I just don't see a lot of evidence for the canopy theory, but it's very interesting to think about. So, long story short, does the canopy theory, or the rejecting of the canopy theory, does that change the account of the flood? No, not at all. It's interesting to look at, okay, could there have been a canopy, but does it change the destruction uh, that was brought out by the flood? Not at all. Again, there was so much water that came upon the earth, whether it was from volcanic, uh, underwater volcanoes, uh, from the waters, from the foundations, uh, the fountains of the earth, or... It was from just a lot of rain that would have been described like windows of the heavens being opened and then closed by people at the time that lived during that time. Either way, it shows the destruction that the flood brought. Uh, but thankfully, 
thankfully, even with all that destruction, there was a little, even though it was not little, it was a big boat, but there was a little boat that was taking uh, that was taking off and that was floating in that time. And thankfully, it saved uh, a few amount of people and a few amount of animals that then God would give grace to and ultimately have a covenant with Noah. And that is where we are going to turn next week. We will be looking at the covenant between God and Noah. But thank you for spending a little bit of time here with uh, me with a special Brahmin word. Uh, yes, it's still in the life of Noah, but it was very much uh, just kind of a, a grand overview of the topic of the, the canopy theory of the flood, how all those waters came about. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was a destructive moment, but it it shows us without with in the midst of all this destruction, God had a few people, a remnant set aside on a floating boat called an ark, and, uh, and that was a show and an act of his grace. So with that being said, we will turn to uh, the covenant of Noah uh, and God between those two uh, next week. So I will see you then. Thanks.